I am Dr. Subhash Gupta and today I am going to tell you about liver transplantation. Did you know that liver transplant operation has overall success rate of 80% in the long term? That means you are cured forever after liver transplant operation. And people are actually scared of liver transplant operation. But if you had liver failure, you would have a good chance of recovery after transplantation. And as you know, liver failure can be of two types. One is the sort of garden variety, chronic liver disease, people who have been drinking too much, and then the liver fails. But interestingly, there are another form of liver failure, where which is an acute liver failure. Com somebody who's been completely well, he, go he develops jaundice, goes into coma, is on a ventilator, and the brain swelling is so much that unless the liver is changed, this brain swelling will not go away. And liver transplantation has a very short history in our country. I think the first liver transplantation was done in 1998. Although the, in the world, the first one was done by Professor Thomas Stasel in 1967. But for a long time, the treatment of liver disease was affected by numerous problems. One of the main problems that we surgeons faced in liver transplantation was that the liver transplant, the old liver has to be removed. And this is a very difficult procedure because these are very sick patients with high jaundice, with re kidney shutdown and they are being in ICU on the ventilator and the major blood vessels surrounding the liver. So when you try and take the old liver out, then there will be a lot of bleeding and low blood pressure patient can succumb here. And this is essential because if you don't do this, then the liver, if it's not placed in its original position, will not work. So the first time the liver transplant operation had this major problem that you had to remove the old liver and put a new liver in. So the, then second thing that happened was, was obviously when you remove the old liver, there has to be a supply of organs. And initial transplants were all from cadaveric sources that people who died in the hospital who brain dead and organs could be retrieved from them and then could be transplanted. Then in 1997, there was a major development in liver transplantation where liver trans organs could be taken from a healthy person. That means although we all have only one organ, but the liver can be divided into two parts. One part is sufficient for the donor and one can, part can be taken out and implanted in the, in the person who is sick with liver disease. And these two uh, major changes brought about a revolution in liver transplantation and that is why in our country where cadaveric donation rates are so low that living donor liver transplantation happens frequently. But obviously when you do living donor liver transplantation you have to think about donor safety and therefore newer procedures such as laparoscopic procedures and robotic procedures have now added to the safety of don donor operation because in the end liver donation is a difficult operation therefore this procedure is limited to a uh, few centers but obviously now with the sort of uh, improvement in technology improvement in imaging and the fact that many doctors and surgeons work together typically a liver transplant operation will take about 12 to 16 hours First, the donor operation has to be done. If it's from a cadaveric source, then the donor sort of uh, suitability has to be assessed. You need lots of coordinators to ensure that consent is there, that the organ functioning was there before the operation. And so that when this is the organ is taken out of the body, there is a little period where it will remain bereft of blood supply. And if there is no blood supply going to it, and if it's not preserved properly, then when you restore blood supply to this organ, this will not work properly. So you first part is ensuring that the organ is of good quality. Second, retrieving it nicely. Third, preserving it nicely. And then reperfusing with blood. All this has to be done in a coordinated manner. Otherwise, this liver will not work post-transplantation. And even if you've done everything correct, you have to be very uh, vigilant in the first two weeks post-transplantation because you need to ensure that the organ is accepted by the body. Because if, uh, you know, even a little bacteria gets into the body, the body starts attacking it. Here, a really big piece of liver has been put into, some, into, into an alien 
sort of uh, atmosphere different from what the liver was used to in the past and the body will start attacking it and therefore you need to monitor rejection give medicines that can actually make you unwell and this all this period will take about a month's time and after that once the liver is accepted by the body it'll serve you well for years to come liver is a very sort of strange organ because although technically very difficult operation to do transplant to do because as i explained earlier you have to take the old liver out and rejoin multiple vessels but once it's uh, sort of implanted it's a very tolerogenic organ very little immunosuppression is needed to maintain sort of its life and a person if he has survived the operation and the risk of the current operation nowadays is about 5 to 10% but once the uh, transplant has been done long term survivals are excellent there are very few organs are lost from chronic rejection unlike other transplants say for example kidney transplantation or bowel transplantation heart transplantation where chronic rejection rates are much higher whereas in liver transplantation the only reason organs are lost is because sometimes the diseases that cause the liver disease uh, liver failure in the first place may happen again and this we see particularly with people who consume alcohol many of them become so well that they actually start taking alcohol again and then the liver gets damaged again or they become so not careful about the diet or exercise they become obese and they get nash for the viral illnesses nowadays there's a excellent medication so viral illnesses do not reoccur post transplantation transplant is also done for hepatocellular carcinoma and sometimes the cancer may come back in the new liver and therefore you have to be vigilant in the follow up period to ensure that the new liver is not affected by the disease that affected it in the first place and overall if you look at uh, across the board then the over 80% long term survival is possible liver transplantation but all this comes at a huge cost donor organs must be available so if you have uh, somebody dies in the hospital then they should be uh, be willing to donate our coordinators will be asking them for organ donation and interestingly organ donation in the past used to happen only from brain dead people but nowadays it is also possible to accept organs from people who have had a cardiac arrest in the hospital because what happens in these people their machines they can be put on sort of uh, uh, ecmo and these organs can be perfused and once they've taken out from the body they can again be uh, undergo machine perfusion perfusion so that you know the viability of this organ and these organs can then be transplanted su successfully uh, once you've assessed its viability so not only people who have brain dead but people who have had cardiac arrest also can donate organs and we really know the number of people who suffer from uh, sort of liver failure in this country is huge somebody i think estimated that the over 2 lakh people die from liver failure every year whereas only about 2000 liver transplant operations are done so if we were to take away the sort of uh, risks of the operation then perhaps and of course we were able to prevent liver disease that's a very important uh, thing i'm going to tell you now because most adult liver disease is actually preventable it's caused by alcohol or by obesity it's caused by hepatitis b and hepatitis c and if you're careful you eat well you don't take too much alcohol you are immunized for hepatitis b and if you get unlucky to get hepatitis c you get treatment then liver cirrhosis won't happen and uh, you will be able to save your liver and similarly if you are unfortunate that you get well up a tumor in the liver which we can also treat by a number of other ways such as by radio ablation and drugs some excellent drugs have come in nowadays for a uh, hepatocellular carcinoma and we can treat with drugs but if you are unfortunate to have liver failure as well as uh, liver cancer then you can be treated successfully by liver transplant operation so we've developed techniques such as abo incompatible liver transplantation that gives you excellent results or you can do what we call swap transplants that means two families are paired and if they have opposing blood groups then one donor from one family gives to the other family and this again we've had a sort of huge experience in this uh, what we call paired exchange donation uh, abo incompatible transplantation where you can uh, Uh, give across different blood groups and but i think the most important point is that uh, liver disease is preventable and therefore we should try and prevent liver disease if you're unfortunate to have uh, liver failure then transplant can give you an excellent quality of life and i and in the future we are going to see many donor operations from the lap laparoscopic method and robotic method thank you